For us INFJs, romantic relationships can be fascinating. Our criteria, they're buzzed. Our sense of self, it's frequently low. Our capacity for affection, every minute there are more of them available. Happily, I get to identify as one of these statistically uncommon, lovesick beings most of the time, and so does my significant other. I never truly thought that dating an INFJ was in the cards for me. It seemed so improbable given how few of us there are. But here I am, in love with a man who knows me too well, and even while I love him for much more than his four-letter code, I'll confess that sharing those qualities makes for a particularly wonderful relationship in many ways. Benefits of INFJ-INFJ relationships. One, we freely exchange aspirations and concepts for the future. Every relationship involving an INFJ is considerably more likely to analyze prospective outcomes and roadblocks than relationships involving practically any other personality type. It could initially seem as though developing one's introverted intuition twice would lead to more issues than they would solve. It also creates a setting where two romantically attached INFJs can discuss how they picture various aspects of their relationship developing as well as share their own individual future views without worrying about coming off as misunderstood. For a couple of the INFJ-INFJ type, entering a serious relationship usually entails daydreaming about the beautiful things a healthy partnership could result in and using the future as a source of guidance or inspiration to get through challenging times. Two, we deeply value and want to participate in each other's hobbies and interests. Prior to our volunteer service trip, my partner and I had never even met, yet it was there that we developed a special kind of kinship around a cause that is very dear to both of our hearts. But one of the few pastimes that the two of us share is volunteering. We each had our own set of interests in friendship circles at the time we first met. Also, we both like to be busy, so we don't frequently purposefully arrive there at the same time. But because of our personality type, we have a strong desire to engage in the interests and responsibilities that define each other as unique persons. We are also quite good at coming up with creative ways to make the other person feel as involved in those activities as possible. 3. We regularly have deep, meaningful conversations as a pair. Being intuitive by nature, my partner and I are put off by little talk and lean toward topics with more depth that encourage original thought. Despite this, it can be challenging to initiate conversations of this nature with just anyone, let alone those closest to us. I can always count on my INFJ partner to provide an environment where my penchant for theoretical debates and abstract concepts will be not only acknowledged but also nourished by his inventive, intellectual point of view. I really look forward to interacting with him in this way at the end of a long day at work in a mostly extroverted setting. His INFJ intellect is my INFJ medicine. Four. Our strong propensity to take care of one another's needs fosters a constructive balance of giving and receiving. My INFJ partner and I are good at recognizing others' emotional needs because of our auxiliary function of extroverted feeling. INFJs frequently recount stories of unsatisfying, one-sided relationships that were mostly brought on by their desire to listen and reluctance to share. I have a high sense of empathy for the ability to put others' needs above one's own much of the time. But I've come to realize that a lot of that comes from within, rather than from how people actually treat us. I am well aware that generous and sincere loving traits are not exclusive to fee types. More has been given up and supplied for me in my life by my ISTJ mother than I could ever repay her. That said, my tendencies to appear like a pushover and overuse the word yes have only increased my appreciation for my INFJ significant other, who, without hesitation, tries to meet my needs just as frequently as I do his. 5. We are not critical of one another's old souls or hopeless romantic tendencies. INFJs don't often run into other people who can relate to them. Very few share my passion for knowledge and need for connection. 
One of the most fulfilling aspects of being in a relationship with another INFJ is being able to express these more reserved aspects of my personality to someone who has the same unusual outlook. I prefer long walks through the city and brewing freshly pressed coffee in a brand new mud to parties, and excessive social media sharing. Although expressing them comes out as melodramatic to most individuals my age and is more common among 50-somethings than 20-somethings, my INFJ partner never criticizes the things that give me tremendous pleasure. In fact, he says, me too, as he crosses his legs next to me on the couch and holds a cup in his hand. 6. We are considerate of one another's need for solitude. Although though my husband and I genuinely care for each other and enjoy being together, we are both introverts who, by nature, prefer calm settings where we can spend time alone and concentrate on our respective goals. As extroverted introverts, INFJs tend to spend their non-alone time around people of a variety of personality types, some of whom perceive them as very outgoing and energetic, thanks to their fee auxiliary function once more. This is true even though all eight types of introverts share this requirement. We disguise ourselves as extroverts, therefore quiet time is especially important. I'm fortunate to be in a committed relationship with someone who shares this peculiarity and appreciates how crucial it is to set aside some time to restore our introverted energies. We INFJs, after all, depend most on our intuition to guide us toward happiness, truth, satisfaction, and, of course, love. 